Okay, we are here for exclusive H- HP event here, SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv coverage. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. We are here for a special exclusive coverage of HP's Project Moonshot, which is a hyperscale initiative around server technology. Dave, I'm here with Dave Vellante, my, uh, my co-host, uh, co-founder of Wikibon.org Research. Dave, what's your research tell you, and then what's your, what's your well, take on Well, first of all, it? this is a very intimate event, right? We were downstairs this morning, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, some folks taking pictures, and so, um, but it's a big deal. I mean, I think that we're seeing, you know, to me, the big picture here is this is all about the consumerization of IT. We've we we've talked a lot, John, on Silicon Angle and Wikibon about how consumerization is really driving innovation in our industry. It used to be, you know, a lot of things that happened in mainframes and the data center, and they they trickle out. Well, it's it's totally flipped. I mean, it's really. We've seen flash start in in iPods. We're seeing you know ARM processors in in cell phones now. You know, take aim at the data center. And I think you know, I think frankly, HP is being very humble here, right? I mean, or very careful. You know, they don't want to upset Intel. HP doesn't really yeah. toot their own horn effectively, yeah. in my opinion. I think HP is very conservative. Said, all you know? all steak, no sizzle. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's a major shift. I mean, I was trying to tease it out, and again, they're like the Boy Scouts. They they're humble, and but they do a great job. And here's the thing: to me, this is all about one thing: the PC processor spawned the server processor side of the Wintel, Intel server business, which was, you know, laughed at by the Unix jockeys in the day. Remember? Risk, you know, you know, risk reduce instruction yeah. set, and local area networking evolved. That footprint expanded, and that growth was just phenomenal. It was a great run up until today. And... You know, you kind of you can cobble all the stuff together from a density standpoint, but you know, blade blade systems, blade system matrix. We've seen all the stuff from HP. Great innovations operating at scale, but this new approach is all about fundamentally rethinking it based upon mobile. Mobile's the new PC. This talks about our thesis of the PC yeah. is dead, and uh, you know, Tarkin Maynard's probably jumping up and down, going, "Yeah, exactly what we see." And um, I just think it's just going to be beginning. I think this is going to be massive growth. I mean, the, the results are phenomenal. That, that yeah, I agree. You, you know, uh, uh, John, at the time, when you were talking about the LAN servers and Novell, I, I was uh, actually, one of the things I did was I ran IDC server business and, and some other businesses and used to track, our guys used to track, you know, the, the suppliers. Compaq dominated. They probably had, I want to say two-thirds to 70% of that server you know, the Intel-based, microprocessor-based server market, that LAN server market. Now, most of the people, many of the people we've interviewed today, where are they from? Houston. Their heritage is Compaq. Compaq, yeah. They really are, are on top of a lot of these trends. They were there in the last wave, and I think they're really trying to drive They're redefining the new wave. And, and this new wave is about Hadoop. It's about big data. It's about cloud. And cloud is exploding. We've, we've seen Amazon crash. We've seen Rackspace trying to hobble together OpenStack. And, you know, there's just so much demand, so much engineering going on. You know, they need these boxes. I mean, these, I mean hell, if you can get 280 servers and a 4U, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, ridiculously, I, insanely amazing. I asked; it was sort of a baited question. Was is this is this the lunatic fringe? I, I really don't think it is. I think this is going to be the the norm of the data center design in the future. We've talked about this regarding uh, Fusion IO. Some have said, "Oh, Fusion IO, it's a niche. If they sell to Facebook, you know, Apple, iCloud." Well, we heard that amazing comment. I forget who mentioned it because it was kind of some of the interviews on. It, but they said these web companies they don't look at servers as as a, a scarce resource. It's the power. Everything's engineered off power. Comes like Facebook, no doubt, going to Arctic for that reason. And they have, you know, solar panels up in deserts, not operational during the day, boots up at night, Arctic during the day. They're shifting resources around the globe in what they said, follow the sun. This is the new data center architecture. It's not about, oh, we got one in Ohio and it serves regional areas. The global data center is about serving the massive cloud, and that's going to be a follow the sun, power optimized on architecture. And I said it before, the, these data centers are, they're like ATMs for these web companies. You know, we talked about Nick Card as IT matter. Yeah, maybe the traditional enterprise where you're running th- hundreds or thousands of apps. You're talking about, you know, a few apps, maybe one app in the case, for instance, of Facebook that is optimized, um, and it's printing money. And so the, the, the more resource you can put into that footprint, the more money you're going to be able to print. Just recapping the news here, HP announces uh, an extreme low-energy server technology uh, called around hyperscale based on the ARM technology. Um, Calzada is the first go-to-market vendor, and they have a lot of ecosystem partners like Red Hat and, and, and Linux and, and others around that. And basically, it's a multi-year project, and this is the key is this is not about CPU-bound 
uh, performance. And the thing about the ARM technology that we that is in mobile is that it's an instant on. You power on, you power off. So this is bringing that to service. So the ability to turn up cores, turn down cores is a key part of this technology. The web environments, everyone's going web environments. It's I.O. intensive, not CPU intensive. Diversity of applications, open source is the key. If you're writing for the LAMP stack, this product will work today. Um, the open stack, we talked a little bit about that. Sub five watt per core, system level approach, attacking the whole problem. This is uh, at the beginning of the day of a fundamentally re-architecting of, of the data center. Now, most people don't understand what that means because essentially they get all the benefits on their mobile device. But imagine having better power, better application performance, faster uh, to your devices. Yeah, so we had uh, five partners today in the part of this Pathfinder program, John. Uh, Canonical, uh, which does the uh, you know Ubuntu, Linux, uh, Red Hat, we all know Red Hat, Calzada, which basically takes ARM processors and adds uh, data center server class power to them um, and, and makes them you know, data center ready. And obviously ARM, which is kind of the, 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 the substrate here, the secret sauce, and AMD, which is kind of an interesting. AMD, I know, you know it yeah. popped in here, it's great. You know, in the essence of Intel, AMD taking an opportunity to step up yeah, the we'll, microphone. We'll, we'll, we'll play in this, in this <laughs> game. Uh, yeah, I mean, they should, <laughs> you know. We love Intel. We love AMD. We're the cube. We love everybody. But, you know, uh, Intel not being here is a major issue for me. I mean, I think Intel mm-hmm. needs to be here. And uh, Well, I mean, it says it all to me, John, that, that, that in, ARM is, you know, ahead in the race. And Intel's playing catch up. And as you said before, they'll, they'll get there. I like I like the conical the the Linux approach. It speaks volumes to the fact that you know this is something that you know not a lot of people are talking about in the mainstream media that Linux has reached a kind of a glass ceiling from a deployment standpoint. That in production environments, Unix vendors are being shipped swift uh, switched out to pure Linux, and running Linux at scales requires massive support. That's why Red Hat's doing so well. And so to have this kind of architecture, this is purpose built. I mean, and this sounds a lot like Larry Ellison's vision. I mean, purpose built gear up and down the stack. Um, you know, I'm interested to he- see how this plays you know, out. It was interesting to have when we had, we had Cal Zeta on. You know. <laughs> one of the more one of the companies we didn't know a lot about. A lot of people probably I couldn't even know pronounce their name at the beginning. Um, they have this Trailblazer initiative. The, the, the companies that they're working with in their ecosystem, um, Autonomic Resources, which is a cloud service provider for the government, Canonical, again, Coringo, which does Object Store, Couchbase, Datastacks, Eucalyptus Systems, Data Cluster, uh, Momentum SI, uh, Ops Code, Pervasive. A lot of the guys driving. I saw you taking notes on big that. Big data was today. Very good of you. No Microsoft. Right, so that's an interesting set of companies, a little broader than the five that we see here. So I fully expect the, these and others will be involved in this. This is where all the action is in the industry. Here, here's today. what I like about that, just to, to riff off that point. This means HP's making bold moves. The old HP would be criticized for pandering to Microsoft and Intel. What they're basically saying, in my opinion, is we're going to go forward. This needs to get done. This new architecture, this new generation approach is good for the econ- economy, good for the economy. Uh, good for the sustainability message, um, and it's the right thing to do. Now, the good news, there's demand for it. I mean, we're going to be at Hadoop World next week live to Cube in New York City. We're going to cover all those app builders and the web scene with big data. And those guys are all living the nightmare of the data center problem, Dave, with power. Um, Twitter, Facebook, stumble upon. So um, some news that just came across, uh, just hit our wire. HP investors regain faith as the CTO retires. Uh, SiliconANGLE Mc- blog just posted this. Um, I saw that this morning. Phil McKinney? Was it Phil McKinney? I'm just pulling it up now. Uh, let's see. After some flip-flopping back and forth, it turns out Hewlett Packard will keep its PC division. It was okay, we know that. As was HP president. So, 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 so. Phil McKinney, that's right. Yeah, he's been here like nine years at HP. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I've never met him. I know he's done a lot of evangelization with some of the social media people. I've never personally even met him in person. From what I could read from his blog, he's really a smart guy. My opinion on it is is that he was more of an evangelist. Not sure specifically which projects he's worked on, um, but you know, it's you know, it's a focused execution right now. It's clear he was from instrumental in the Palm acquisition, I believe. So. Um not sure what sent a signal that. He's an that active sense. blogger. In fact, he broke the news of his retirement on his personal blog. So, you know, 
love the guy. He's a blogger. So, so one of the things that impressed me t- today, John, is a lot of emphasis on the ecosystem, right, and, and on having partners and, and software developers. You, know, you didn't see that with the, the tablet. Obviously, everybody knew that you needed apps for the tablet, but you, you saw a real lack of applications for HP's tablet, and they, of course, pulled it from the market. And so there's a big question mark around it. So I think they're doing this right. Well, I mean, let's, I mean, I have an opinion on the tablet. HP tablet is a, is got a great OS in web OS. The web OS had a great developer ecosystem. We covered on Silicon Angle going back uh, to 2009, prior to the merger or the buyout, um, and loyal web OS. A senior Apple engineer told me privately in Silicon Valley that the web OS is the only operating system on mobile that can compete with Apple. Hands down. Elegant, he goes, said. He said, in, at Apple, Steve Jobs and others talked privately about the fact that there's only one horse that could compete with Apple quickly, and that was WebOS. Okay, so, you know, I understand the Android's rapid growth, and numbers speak for themselves, and the rapid rise of Android, but WebOS is a major asset. I'd push that out there as an open source project. I'd get it out there. I would not kill a WebOS. So, Meg Whitman, if you're watching, and team... HP, keep WebOS. You got HP Labs here. Give it to someone who's smart. Let them play with it. Mobile. Let them right. play with it. So early. The, the, I mean, I think I think to up to that point. I mean, we've heard a lot about Android being really bloated, and 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 speaks to the point of there's a real demand for an alternative to Apple. Android's just early. I mean, Android has been cobbled together, rushed to the market by Google. It's growing leaps and bounds. Android is that PC like Windows environment where you've got a massive distribution through the carriers and the handset guys. And Android is is rocking and rolling. You cannot deny the distribution effect of Android. And, and again, what developers love, they love distribution and they love monetization. That's Developers love that. And any kind of stability around a platform, developers will go crazy for. If WebOS is kind of like floundering, and at some point they just got to cut it. Uh, my thing is save it. Keep the developer community, bring it into the fold. Um, and again, the tablet stuff with HP was... They sold off the shelves at ninety nine dollars. Now the bill of materials might be closer to three hundred or two hundred. So you just go to your supply chain guys and saying, "Get this thing down to ninety nine bucks." Well, the fact that they're keeping the PC division is a big deal. You've, yeah. you've told the story a number of yeah. times about the the calculator division and how that became the distribution channel for for printers. I mean, this would be appropriate time to tell that story. Well, you know, it? I think you should because yeah. we're in front yeah. of. You know. So I'm going to tell the story about it. This is again John, a John story. This is nothing. I don't think it's actually written anywhere. But behind me is the office of Bill Hewlett. Bill Hewlett was the founder of HP, who wanted to have a calculator that can fit into his shirt pocket. So HP built the calculator that we know, the 15C or the predecessor. Everybody has one. We, probably, probably we all had one. one my, my, Everyone who's over, over 30 probably had one in college. Yeah, of course. Um, and so what happened was it became a big success, and at some point it wasn't really making any money. So no one, wanted to, no one at HP wanted to kill it because the founder – built it and it was his project it was a pet project so what they did was they essentially kept it alive and they said well let's just sell it through resellers and sell it to college campuses and bookstores so they created an indirect sales channel of dealers barely made any money but it kept the project alive the founder saw his baby still out in the marketplace and then what happened was during the mini computer um, crash uh, in the 80s and when the pc revolution that steve jobs created started booming um, hp had no pcs their mini computer business was 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 flat and dying. They were on a road like Data General and digital equipment, like this. And Prime Wang DG Dick, Apollo. Dick Hackborn, they all Dick Hackborn in uh, in Boise, Idaho, built a laser printer. List price fifty thousand dollars. The CEO John Young at the time nixed it. He went out and with Canon built a laser printer for sub four thousand. OEM the engine. OEM the engine. Canon built it. All they built was the motherboard with PCL, printer control language, um, out of Boise, Idaho. My friend Bill Murphy coined the term LaserJet. That was the name. It went out the door and sold with Wang Word processors. And because it was a rogue project, they had to sell it. So they sold it through their reseller division which was barely hanging around only because no one wanted to kill the laser. The, which was the calculator. The calculator. That nobody distrib- wanted to kill. No one wanted to kill the calculator product, which created the indirect sales channel. And then from that point, the laser jet saved HP, created the inkjet, which was a um, build off the, their thinkjet, which is a thermal printer, created the PC uh, C change, the servers. And since that time, the company's revenue skyrocketed. And an ink franchise. Ink franchise, stock splits over and over again, all because they had a reseller channel. If they had killed the calculator, 
They never would have had the reseller channel. HP might not even be alive. That's my story. And it just goes to show you that you keep things around. Just because it's not making money doesn't mean you have so to So tie it. it back to WebOS. And, yeah, and so Tom. the PC division, my thesis was, why would you kill the PC division? You, they're number one in the market. may not be that most economical right now, but you have supply chain expertise. You have people and you have integrated components. Now it all came out. The analysis proved what, what I was saying to be true. And... You have a channel of distribution there. So with that channel, you have market power. So all you got to do is create a good product and put it through that channel. So that could take a year, could take two years, but they have an opportunity. They are not dead. WebOS, certainly not dead. There's things in the marketplace. They could come out with a new product. They could do a partnership. You just never know. Point it's a is, fantastic case study and story, You just Jonathan. don't know. That. You just don't know. And there's actually a calculator on his desk inside here. We'll have to get some footage of that. But it just goes to show you that, you know, if the founder wasn't around, what would have happened if they had a, you know, a board that didn't care, they would have said, oh, this doesn't make any money. Let's kill the calculator division. Well, there's the story. That and, and, and now, you know, we're at the cusp of this huge tsunami called Mobile. And, uh, and HP owns one of the yeah. more interesting assets, the one that you're saying Apple is more, more concerned about. Apple was concerned about it, and uh, obviously and Steve Jobs uh, in his biography actually um, did not trash uh, HP. He was actually he was bummed for HP, but he didn't trash him. He trashed everyone else, but he actually had a huge respect for HP. Obviously, Steve Wozniak worked here. Um, Dave Packard was a mentor to Steve Jobs. Um, HP has a huge reputation of quality, great brand in the marketplace. I think the performance of the divisions within HP are all doing well, Dave. If you look at the numbers, underneath the leadership void that's been there uh, in the past uh, you know, decade, the divisions have been doing extremely well, and the executives in charge of these billion-dollar businesses are actually developing great products. We're hearing this announcement here today. So with Meg Whitman at the helm and Ray Lane helping with the, uh, with the duties on the services side, I think you're going to have a compelling turnaround. I think it's not as hard as people think. I think the, the formula is there. And again, if they can develop that next product, they need a laser jet. They need that. They need that killer product to come out. And so that would be the mandate that I would put down to the team, and you see what happens. Well, I mean, we're seeing a glimpse of that today. I mean, you're, and we've you know we, we talked a lot about ESSN, and we've been very high on ESSN in the in the in the networking business. Obviously, the storage business, the three par acquisition, which was a huge acquisition, two and a half billion almost that they paid for that, but. 3PAR has doubled its revenues. Look at the 3Com, look at the 3Com integration. Yeah. Marius Haas, who we, we were talking about. Bethany yes. Mayer's running that now. Yeah. Uh, and now we're seeing a, a real real innovation on the server side with this announcement today with uh, Calzada and Arm and, and others. So. so we had guests coming up. We had Stan Williams scheduled. He was a senior fellow here at HP Labs. Um, he was a, He's a total geek. He's the director of the Nano Electronics Research Group. So he's, he's not here. So An- Angelina Jasper.